Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in this tutorial, uh, I think I've made a decision to cut back on the pathfinding for this game. I know we spent a lot of time fixing it, perfecting it, making it faster, etc. But I just think it's taking away from uh, the fun parts of the game we're trying to make, and it's maybe a little bit too advanced for some people, and uh, people following along might not. Uh, understand exactly what's happening or why we're spending so much time just trying to figure out his pathfinding. So uh, I'm thinking of instead of using pathfinding, just uh, using a basic uh, look at and just go forward. So basically, the enemy will just plow directly forward wherever the player is. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the update method and uh, where it says move to destination I'm just going to comment that out and add a new line and oh actually you know what I forgot to do something I did forgot to do the little magnifying thing so hopefully you guys like this uh, you guys can give back your feedback on how much you enjoy this uh, thing or if you don't like it I can just take it off but yeah okay so I'm gonna have to magnify this a little bit more that's good. Okay. Actually, maybe too much. Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is basically have the enemy point towards the player. So to do that, we're going to go image angle. Does this have an image angle? Image direction. Okay, what is it? <laughs> I forgot what it was. As you can see, I haven't made a tutorial in a while, and I apologize, I skipped this week because I was sick, and yeah, and I, and I didn't get to, around to doing it, so I apologize. Uh, okay, oh, it's called rotation. So just go back to enemy, and we want to change the rotation. Rotation equals point direction. And then, of course, this position. We're gonna put in the po its uh, position, which is position dot x and position dot y, and the player's position, which should be man dot man dot position dot x, man dot man dot position dot x. Okay, so that should point the enemy towards the player. And then we should always have a, the player should, I mean, the enemy should always be pushing towards the player. So push to, or we can actually just say direction. Actually, is rotation the same as direction? I'm not sure. To go back to our object class. And let's see. I'm sorry, I'm just checking something. Uh, push to rotate. Okay, seems to be the same. Uh, yeah, okay, they're the same. So let's go back to enemy and we just set speed to speed. And so the enemy will constantly just go towards the player. So let's uh, run this and see if it works. So as you can see, uh, it's sort of working. For some reason it's pausing and it's not it's supposed to be constantly looking at me uh, let me see if I can fix this okay let's try uh, taking this stuff out of this if statement and running it and that should make sure that the enemy is doing that uh, or following the player at all times so Apparently it's not working.
sorry guys. I think... You know what? I did a dumb thing. I actually accidentally paused when I was supposed to be recording and started recording when I was supposed to be paused. So I hope that didn't mess you guys up too much, but I'll just go and tell you what I've done so far. So I created a new gun data class and this is basically going to keep track of all the data in a gun so we can switch our guns in and, in and out and stuff. So the ID is just to keep track of the unique, unique ID for each gun, the name, self-explanatory, ammo and magazine, it's basically how much ammo it can carry in each magazine, it's damage, it's bullet speed, it's recoil, spread, rate, and gunfire type. Gunfire type is keeps track of its semi-automatic, automatic, or single fire shot. Uh, and it just keeps track if it can do all of them or one or two, etc. And so we created two constructors. The first one only taking the ID, second one taking everything. So that's what uh, I'm making right now. So hopefully I didn't uh, miss, you guys didn't miss too much. So uh, now what we want to do is say this.id equals id, this.name equals name etc do that for all the variables and what this means is basically this is the the instance of this class so this dot id means this id right here instead of this one right here because they have the same name if you don't have this it's going to get confused and it's going to think it's the same variable so you have to put this dot id to make sure you're talking about the one you're putting uh, up here in the class so just make sure to do that. I'm going to pause the video and come back when I... Okay, we're back. And uh, now we want to create a static variable up here. Just say name it public static. And we'll call this gun db. It's short for database. Oh, I forgot to give you a data type. And we're going to make this a dictionary. Wait. Actually, we can make it this a dictionary. Why not? Uh, and hmm, you know, I, sorry, I'm debating if I should make it dictionary or I'll just make it a list. Yeah, that's that's better. Okay, and uh, we're gonna make this a list of gun data. So this will basically have each gun in uh, this list. So each unique different type of gun will be in this list. So uh, that's why it's called the gun database. And so when we want to make a new gun or I mean uh, change guns or stuff like that we can just type in an ID. It will search the ID and put it in the list and the list will get us all this information. So that's where this constructor comes in. So uh, this is what's going to happen. So when we put in the ID, it says this dot oops this dot ID equals ID obviously because uh, that's what we put in the constructor and this dot name equals gun not that gun database ID and that's what we're gonna put that's the index the index is gonna be the ID dot name so. Just copy and paste this, and just instead of name, just do it for all the rest of the variables. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when I'm done. Okay, and we're back. Let's see how we're doing on time. Uh, we're almost running out. So, as you can see, this is basically what I did. Is I just uh, set each variable to the gun ID, uh, to the gun uh, in the database, uh, whose index is the ID and uh, I just set all the variables to this one so uh, and then we're gonna create another static method that will load all the different guns uh, from an XML file and we'll get that to that in the next tutorial so thank you for watching appreciate if you give it a rating uh, don't forget to comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next tutorial thank you bye